Hi folks, I'm Dennis. We've got to replace a radiator in a 2004 Jeep Liberty automatic with air four-wheel drive. So let's get started. First thing you have to do on this vehicle is you got to remove the grill. It's got some torque screws here, 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 and here. You take those four out, um, fold the grill forward, comes right out, it's clipped at the bottom. It takes a T20 Torx bit. That's all there is to it. Comes right out. Down at the bottom, you can see there's some, uh, just some little clips that snap in. So when you roll it forward, they pop right out. Next couple of things we have to do, <clears throat> you gotta come in right here and take this bolt out for the air conditioning condenser. There's another bolt here for the, air, for the AC condenser. Another bolt right down here for the transmission oil cooler. And then this header has to come off. There's a couple of bolts over here, a couple over there that have to come out, and a couple down here that take the whole hood latch and header assembly out of the way. Then we can get to the radiator. Before I start on all that, what I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna use the drain plug on the radiator to go ahead and drain it so that it's empty before I am ready to pull it out. Cut it down at the at the bottom of the radiator on the driver's side right there is the drain plug um, it's a hex valve a 5 8 wrench will fit on it normally you gotta screw them in to make them drain no this one you gotta you gotta unscrew it you gotta go counterclockwise you need a catch pan underneath it. You see how it popped out a little bit when I turned it? About a half a turn. Once you get that open, then you see it'll start draining. Watch your drain pan, because the capacity on this car is uh, 14 quarts. So it won't drain all of that out, but it'll drain a great deal of it out. So you gotta watch, make sure you don't overflow your drain pan. So we're gonna let that drain while we're working on other stuff. Okay, these bolts here um, that we've gotta take out for the condenser and the uh, transmission oil cooler, they're 10 millimeter. I'm using a 12 inch extension just to give me plenty of room with the ratchet. The bolt that holds on the, um, the transmission oil, oil cooler is let's see if I can show this to you. It's right there. So the best way to get to it's going to be to go through this. There's a hole right here in the this plastic assembly that goes behind the grill. You can go right through there and get to that bolt. Um, you might need a swivel. I can get in there fine with a with a straight extension and a socket. All right, same thing is true on this side. I got a bolt right there, and I got a bolt down here. I can get to through this hole. They're just little short bolts, like so. All right, next you've got to take out the 10 millimeter bolts on the top of this header. There's three on each side. Then there's a couple down here that hold the bottom of the uh, the bracket that's got the hood latch. Some people will tell you to drill these rivets out. Don't drill the rivets out. Just take these bottom two bolts out. The whole thing will come out by itself. You don't have to worry about drilling rivets and trying to figure out how to replace them. These are also fairly short bolts. Okay, the two bolts you need to get down here in the bottom, there's one here and one here. Um, they're uh, 
directly under the hood latch. And there's a couple metal, th this piece that's riveted to the header uh, here goes straight down to here. So take those two loose, then the whole header hood latch assembly will come out. Um, I had to go to a shorter extension, a six inch extension to get in there and that should take care of it. The windshield washer bottle is plastic riveted to the header plate. So you got to get that off. You don't have to take the bottle out. There's a loop made into this ring that goes over the mouth of the bottle. That's to allow expansion to get it right off the top of the bottle. That way you don't have to take the rivet out. You don't have to do anything special. See how that'll just come right off? Just pry it right off. Now it's off of there. You don't have to worry about your bottle or anything. It'll, it'll come right out with the header. Right here at the hood latch, there's, an, there's a bolt right here that also holds in this, this bracket with, that's riveted on. You gotta take that off too. Once you get the bolt out, and you gotta be careful of this when there's a clip that the bolt goes into. It's one of those threaded nut clips. And it goes on here. So you wanna go ahead and pull that off, otherwise you're gonna lose it. I'll just thread it onto the bolt a little bit so I'll remember where it goes and what it's for. You have to do a little finagling to get this header panel out, but it's gotta come out and get out of your way so you can get the radiator out. So the, the intake for your air filter box, it's over top of the header. You gotta kinda of pry it out of the way. You got this loop off the windshield washer bottle. So you get all that kinda of out of the way. You can pull this side of it up. Be careful of your paint. You don't wanna scratch your paint up. Get the Pry this plastic grill backer out of the way to clear that clip. And then you can just kind of pull the whole thing out. Your hood latch cable is attached, so be aware of that. Don't just snatch the thing out or you pull that loose somewhere. And then I'm just going to set it up out of my way just like that. You can set it up there, prop it up at the, at the top of the engine compartment, prop it up on the alternator. It's out of my way, good to go. Next thing I've got to do is disconnect the cable to the electric fan. There's the electrical connector. Chrysler connectors have a little orange tab in there. There's a, there's a side that's got like a little skinny end like that. And there's a side that's got a fatter end that kind of comes up over the edge. It's got to come out toward the, the fat end. So if I, I believe the way you got to do these things is push that down just a little bit then pop it out. I don't know if I can do it one-handed. I, mean, I don't know if you saw that, but I pushed down on this end, popped it out on this end. And now you can see it's popped out right here. Get this orange tab pulled all the way out. Well, not all the way, I'm not removed, but it's about a quarter of an inch, it comes out. Then there's a release right here on the plug. You push that down and then the whole thing comes off. All right, so then that's out of your way. And now we can go to getting the fan out. All right, I'm gonna take a pair of channel locks, water pump pliers, whatever you wanna call them. I'm gonna take off the overflow tube which is here, you just squeeze that clamp, whole thing comes off. You hear the rest of my coolant draining, that's because I just created a, I just relieved the vacuum in the radiator, so that's why I keep the, that drain plug open while I'm doing all this. Same thing with the upper radiator hose, got a squeeze clamp, you squeeze it, slide it back off down the hose so it's off of the neck, and then you can pull the whole thing loose. Just kind of walk it off. You got to put apply a little bit of force to it to get it off, and then be careful. You'll fling antifreeze in your face. There's a little bracket that holds the overflow tube to the upper radiator hose. I'm gonna pull that off and get it out of my way. All right, and then you can then you can kind of 
just do your best to find a place to try to get that up or out of your way. It's probably not going to happen. You don't want to put a, a kink in it and leave it there too long, but so I'm just going to leave it there. There are two 10 millimeter bolts that hold on the, uh, the fan. One's right here up underneath the uh, upper radiator hose neck, and the other one is right here, kind of just adjacent to the plug. We've got to take those out. That'll let us get the electric fan out of the way. These are all fine threads, so they usually break loose real easy, no problem. Here, right there, and right there is just a clip that holds the electric fan in. So with these two bolts out up on the top, all you gotta do is pull the fan straight up, and they'll come right out. Fan comes right out. Now we are able to see all of the radiator. Still got to take the lower hose loose. Still got to uh, close the drain. But you see why I leave that drain open because I'm still getting cooling out of it. So I'd rather get most of it out while I'm working uh, than to have to wait on it. Close it here in just a minute after I get this lower hose. What you want to do is when you take that lower hose loose right there, you want to make sure your catch pan is underneath it because it's going to drain some stuff too out of the block. So I'll, what I'll do is I'll close my petcock and then I'll move my drain pan over here and catch it from the lower hose. Take a pair of channel locks, squeak, get them on the both ears of that clamp, squeeze it and walk it off, walk it down the hose a little bit off the neck. Once you get it off the neck of the radiator, you can get the you can get it off the get the hose off. And it'll probably gush out a big mess. Again, you gotta you gotta work on it a little bit to get it off. Yeah. All right, next you have to get this baffle out of the way because there's a couple of bolts uh, back in here that, that the, attach the radiator to the metal header. You've got to pop these plastic rivets out. You just want to be careful not to tear that baffle up. Got my glove. They'll, sometimes they'll get a little torn up when you pull them in and out. Most of the time you can get them out and put them back in once and they'll stay. If not, you can buy these things by the pack real cheap at the parts house. You pull that out of your way now and you can see right here there's a bolt and that, that's part of the radiator assembly. So we got to take that 10 millimeter bolt out also. That's a much longer bolt than the rest of them. And we got to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not really squeezing that plastic rivet. I'm just using the, the needle nose to support it on both sides so I can pull it out, hopefully without destroying it. Now this side's not split like that other side, so you're probably going to take them both out. can see that bolt right there too that one's got to come out all right next thing that we've got to deal with is uh, these little brackets here the transmission oil cooler sets down in that bracket on both sides there's one it's kind of hard to see it over here but it's right there and then the AC condenser sets in a portion of that bracket right behind it right there you got to lift those out before you can get the radiator out 
you want to be careful to not beat these things up because they're they're delicate just like a radiator they've got fins and they can get bent up and Get that oil cooler out of the way. You can lift the AC unit up out of its bracket over there and over here. All right, it's going to be real hard to show you this, but um, right down in there, between right between this rubber baffle and the radiator, the the baffle snaps onto the radiator right there. There's a little plastic ear that this baffle catches on, and it's got a lip on the top of it. So you got to pry that baffle up off of it. Otherwise, it keeps a, it holds the radiator down. You got to be careful when you're prying, not to pry up against the AC condenser, because you don't want to break something on that. Then you're looking at an air conditioning uh, repair job and a evac and recharge. So. Anyway, just know that that baffle is attached to the radiator right there. And if you get, you can get in there with a slotted screwdriver and pop it right off and it's no sweat. There's, there's one on both sides. This one will be a little easier to show you. You can see on the front, right there you see the little lip. And this baffle is attached to that. So what you got to do is you got to come in behind it. Just like that. All right, these baffles are caught on the, the bottom brackets that hold the transmission oil cooler and the AC condenser. Uh, that baffle is also over that bracket, so you gotta get it off of those too. Right, if you get over here on this side, you can actually you take these two plastic rivets out we took out a minute ago. You can actually just pull this whole baffle down like this, and that'll let you get it off of the front of the radiator right there. Probably do the same thing on this side, but I didn't really need to. So, yeah, that works. Just pull it out of the way. Just pull them out through the front. The other, the other guys that I watched just say finagling to get it out. I'm going to show you how to finagle it out. Your AC condenser is here. you got flexible lines on it, which is a blessing. All right, so what you got to do, get your radiator, you know, it's, we're loose from everything now, so get it up to where you can, and it's going to be hitting on these AC lines. So get it up here kind of as far as you can. Get your AC lines and, and delicately hold the condenser up. You'll have to kind of work around those baffles. Get that AC condenser up enough where you can get this ear out from over them. Once you get it over them, now you're golden. You can, the whole thing will come out. So we'll see how much trouble it is to get the new one in, but that's the old radiator with the crack in it. 